Okay, uh, I think uh, we have uh, most critical people here, and uh, let's study. <laughs> um, let me introduce myself again. Uh, uh, considering we have a new people just uh, just join us, um, my name is Jack Jack Ren. I'm from Intel. Actually, I'm not a virtualization guy, and uh, my main ground is uh, is Android. Uh, early this year, I started to work with our virtualization team. Um, uh, to uh, try, uh, trying to uh, utilize virtualization technology into uh, uh, into Android. Um, actually, uh, both Dong Xiao, uh, both Xiantan and Dong Xiao, are uh, from are from Android, uh, are from virtualization team. Um, we work together uh, to uh, implement one of the prototype. That actually, that is uh, just an innovation project. It's not an official project actually. Um, Okay, this is an agenda. First, I will give, a, give the overview and about what, uh, what, it, what, what this project is and uh, uh, what uh, our goal is. Uh, then I will talk about uh, some de design details. Uh, even so, we still, by the, uh, in this way, we can get an uh, 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 almost late performance, but we still identify the several gaps. So. Uh, so I will I will talk about these uh, gaps here and uh, analyzing and uh, uh, in also including the optimization we have done. Um, finally, it's a summary. Okay, that is overview. Um, actually, back to the Zen Summit uh, 2011 in Seoul, um, Jun Nakajima from Intel. Um, actually, he is an uh, uh, architect uh, in Intel virtualization team. Um, he has a uh, uh, he had a talk called the mobile virtualization using Zen technology. His comments is that mo mo mobile virtualization will be more important for them uh, uh, in the future, and Zen will be uh, a unique uh, has a unique advantage there. For example, Zen is a thin and it's a light what, uh, hypervisor. Uh, it is um, a perfect uh, choice you know, if we want to virtualize uh, mobile devices, and. Uh, um, uh, Jun also pro proposed that, um, something like this, that is uh, um, host, uh, <coughs> Domain 0 run the host Android, and Domain 1 or Domain uh, U will run uh, guest Android, uh, bo both of them are PV. Um, actually, he also provided another, another, uh, a another system I didn't show here, that is uh, uh, Domain U. Or will run will be used as a HVM and run the windows, and uh, uh, you, actually, they, I believe all of you are familiar with this diagram because uh, uh, that is a traditional one. That is the native native device will be passed through the domain zero, and also domain zero will um, provide the back end virtualized watch, driver. Uh, domain U will get will access the uh, will access uh, the physical devices. <coughs> Uh, by front front end driver through the back end uh, from front end driver through the back end driver in the domain zero, that is a, that is a, a well known diag uh, diagram by all of you guys. Uh, today, uh, we promoted another uh, usage case that is uh, just uh, un just uh, just run Android in domain zero, just uh, run guest, and the hypervisor will be used as a TE. A T. T means a trust execution engine. That means uh, we could uh, do something security, uh, do something, uh, do something secure in the in the hypervisor. And uh, um, but we don't want to uh, want to sacrifice the performance power too much because both of them are key are the keys to their mobile devices. Uh, when we uh, if we uh, if we if this solution is adopted in the production, um, we cannot tell we we cannot tell the end user that uh, because uh, we use the virtualization technology, so you have to live with the back, uh, the wolf head introduced by uh, virtualization. To the user, they just care about the performance. They don't care what technology we are using in the device. Okay, so so we don't want to sacrifice the performance and the power too much. That is the main topic uh, I would like to, uh, to talk today. 
Okay, that is design details. Um, in this, uh, in this, in this uh, diagram, we, uh, we, we, we run the enjoy almost laterally, that is, uh, for example, the I.O. All the I.O. will pass through the enjoy, and uh, so that the uh, enjoy device's driver can control, uh, can, can, can access the physical device uh, laterally. Uh, in this way, we can get the relative performance when, we, when the um, Android it tries to access uh, physical, physical devices, such even, even for the graphics. Um, the second is the CPU. Uh, all the virtual CPU will append to uh, physical, uh, physical CPUs. Uh, in this way, we can eliminate the vCPU scheduling penalty. We disable the uh, we disable the Zen uh, 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 scheduler. We also disable the, uh, almost all of us uh, timers from Zen, except the except the uh, snapshot timer, which is uh, provided always ticky to the uh, guest OS. Uh, for the MMU, uh, we use the virtualized uh, method. That means uh, um, um, actually that is. Uh, that is limited by domain zero because the current domain zero is, is still PV, not HVM. Uh, but uh, uh, PV MMU has a good runtime performance, but, it's, but uh, PV MMU has its own problem, <coughs> and especially when you try to um, uh, run application. If we could get a uh, slow Launching time just because of allocation trying to uh, trying to allocate a lot of memory and cost a lot of page uh, page four, yeah. Um, but f but once the allocation is launched, the performance is very good. Just to impact the, the launching time. Uh, for the uh, IRQ, uh, Zen owns the IRQ and uh, use a traditional way that it dispatches to the Zen uh, to dispatch to Android. Sorry, not Zen. Uh, to uh, where the event channel. Uh, the main overhead is a rain switch that is um, uh, th that is a zine will get the uh, get the interrupt and forward the interrupt inject the interrupt to the domain uh, to, to domain zero enjoy. Um, in most of the cases, in ninety nine percent of uh, of cases, that is uh, very good. Is except in strange cases, IRQ overhead is still visible. Yeah, for example, uh, when, uh, when, when we try to, um, to run the, the Wi-Fi throughput test case, we, we found that the uh, Wi-Fi could uh, generate uh, more than uh, 10,000 interrupts per second. In this way, we from, from found that the throughput will be, will, will be a snow, uh, will, be, uh, will be a little bit worse than native one. Uh, another FPU, um, if PU is a pair virtualized, actually we, all, we can also use uh, a path through, that means uh, just a path through FPU to the, to the domain zero. But we found that even use a pair virtualized method, PMU performance is, uh, is still very good. It's, um, so we just use it. Because main reason is that we pin the virtual CPU to the physical CPU, we also disable the, the, uh, the Zen scheduler from Zen. In this, in that means uh, if PU um, uh, you could save, you could save uh, lazy restore just happen during, uh, during the task switch in the domain, uh, domain zero. Uh, uh, then itself will not trigger any, any uh, FPU save restore. Um, for, for the high, for these three items are related to the power. The first is CPU idle. We, we just pass through CPU idle to the Android. Uh, that means uh, when, this, when the Android is idle, the idle thread will just call, uh, just call the M08 and put the CPU into, into the idle mode. Uh, another is, uh, next one is the CPU freak. We just pass through to Android. The main reason is that uh, um, Android has its own CPU, CPU freak governor. That is an interrupt governor uh, developed by, by Google. Uh, for example, when the, when, when, when the user uh, launch the application, actually, uh, the, the, the actual manager will uh, request a high frequency. In this way, it can boot, boost the CPU frequency and get a, get their uh, quick quick response when the application is launched. Yeah. 
After that, CPU frequency will blow down again. Um, uh, next one is a standby. Standby uh, for the standby will also pass through Android. Uh, when Android, um, when the user just pull the power button, the Android will try to put the system into the standby mode. Um, uh, Android has its own power management. It, it is based on the clock, and so in this, in the uh, in, in our design, because we just have one guest running in the uh, on top of them, so we it's totally fine. We just pass through the standby power management to 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 the domain there. But uh, standby A3 is a little bit trick here. Uh, I will talk in the next slides. Um, in the original design, um, if the domain zero on t uh, running on top of uh, Zen, actually uh, when the domain zero, uh, domain zero idle thread trying to uh, end the low power state, the behavior is that uh, that the guest uh, this CPU will, will be scheduled out by the by the Zen, not really put the CPU into low power state. So in our design, uh, we we just uh, um, you use the domain zero owns the full six binary zone logic, in, including six binary device, put a device into, for example, d, into the D3, D3 or D3 hot mode. And, uh, and then will provide, provide a hyper call to another user to issue the real monitor M weight calls. Uh, uh, so, so to put the CPUs into C6 or even uh, even 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 no, lower uh, even higher uh, lower power state than C6, for example, for item that is so-called S S0 I3, that is put not not just put the CPU into the, into the C6 state, it also turn off the CPU totally and turn off most of the devices by by shutdown, and uh, um, in the, another thing is that. Uh, um, when the, for example, when, try, when the user tried to put the Android into standby, the, the, boot, the boot, boot CPU will offline the long boot CPU first. And this time, uh, at that time, the boot, long boot CPU either thread will call, a hyper call call means uh, uh, vCPU up. Uh, the parameter is uh, vCPU up down. Let's try to put the CPU um, into uh, into low po low power state in the old original design, that that hyper call just schedule out the vCPU instead of instead of put the uh, the CPU into real low power state. Yeah. Um, once the the launch put CPU is uh, in uh, is is in C six state, the CPU zero CPU zero is a put CPU. Uh, then will issue the command to put the whole system into low power state. <coughs> Then the system will end the will end the sleep. Um, once the the user press the power button or someone someone or some you wake up events such as a USB or wake uh, Wi-Fi or or phone call, um, cause the system wake up and the, the boot CPU zero boot boot CPU will be waking up first. It will it will issue the command. <coughs> Uh, we issue the command to wake up the other CPU from, from Zen. And Zen will uh, return from the previous hyper call and return to the previous state in the, in the other, uh, for the other offline CPUs. After that, all the CPU is online. In this way, we can get a, a double faster than the native for the A3 reason. Okay, that is. Um, uh, preliminary uh, power update we get uh, um, uh, 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 at the beginning. Uh, you can see that um, more than 90% of performance reach 95% uh, uh, of uh, relative, pow relative power. Uh, but we also found several, several gaps. First is the browsing, that when the user uh, trying to do the web browsing, over the Wi-Fi, or do the video streaming over the uh, over the Wi-Fi uh, based on the HDMI HDMI file. Another 
uh, book, uh, another um, issue you found that is uh, home screen scroll. That is uh, when the user uh, just like this, yeah, scrolling the home screen, we found that the power consumption is higher. Um, that is the power. So we still identified several gaps. And uh, that, this page is uh, about the, the performance. Uh, you can see that 90% uh, of benchmark reach uh, 97 of relative performance. And, uh, but we still found another, several gaps, for example, the coding I.O. Uh, coding I.O. Is, uh, is a benchmark you widely, in, you widely used in the Android uh, devices. It's, uh, it, it just try to me measure their I.O. performance on the Android devices and uh, publish the data over, over the web line. The user could uh, refer, refer to this data to, to determine which device is, is the best. Um, another issue is about the uh, uh, safe bench. Safe bench has uh, many different uh, uh, KPIs, but one of the KPI is to measure the network performance. We found that performance is just 30, 33% per percent of the latitude of the latitude one. It's a bad, yeah. So we identified the both uh, uh, several gap, uh, we identified several gaps for both, uh, on both power and performance, and we needed to develop some tools to help us. And uh, first, we enabled the Vtune. Vtune is um, Intel homemade the, uh, the tool. It is based on, on PMU, use a PMU performance monitor to connect the event, such as cache miss, CPU cycles, and uh, etc. Uh, but uh, in this, we enable it very quickly, just pass through a PMU and then pop to the domain zero. And the data connector still run, it still, still runs in the domain zero. That means uh, that tool is just able to profile domain zero, cannot profile Zen itself. So, if we want to, uh, to provide the, the Zen itself, we develop another tool, means uh, Zen Trace. Actually, Zen Trace is based on original Zen Trace, and, but we, we modified it to, to just count the key, event, uh, key events and hypercores, such as page 4, and RQ, and other hypercores, and, uh, and, give, and uh, tell us what, uh, how, how many CPU cycles are used in those key events or, or hypercores. Another tools are Perf and Zen O Profiler. Um, Zen Profiler, the Perf is based on PMU. Uh, it can use a pr to, to profile or tune the domain zero. Zen O Profiler can use it to tune Zen. But in our case, uh, we mainly use uh, the uh, first two tools, that is the V2 and Zen tools, uh, Zen, 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 Zen Trace. Okay. In the, uh, in the next several pages, I will talk about the uh, case study. Uh, for, um, just, I point, uh, just as I pointed in here, coding I.O. has a gap. Uh, the gap is about 21%. Uh, um, we, we, we analyzed the, uh, uh, the coding I.O. by if trace, we found that, uh, that the storage data are cached in the page cache, uh, which is adequate for high memory. Um, and each page cache uh, needed to, uh, if someone want to uh, access the uh, page cache, um, it needed to uh, key, key, map, key map the page cache, and uh, after, uh, after access, it will re uh, key unmap the page cache. Uh, that uh, introduced another problem because it uh, introduced a lot of uh, PVMU hyper calls, such, uh, such as a PMU, PMU update. And the uh, uh, MM, MME, and extend the uh, hypercores to flush the TLB. Uh, instead of modifying the Zen itself, uh, we modified the Android itself. That is, first we shrink, we shrink Zen memory print from, uh, from um, 106 8 megabytes to 72 megabytes. In, in this way, uh, we can get a more, more, low, more low end memory in the domain zero. 
then, and, and then we force the page cache allocated for the no memory. In, in this way, page cache can be accessed by kernel address. Uh, no need to use a key map to get the watch address. Uh, in this way, we can re reduce the, the gap from 21% to 8.5%. Uh, the question is, can we continue to optimize and close that gap of 8.5%? Um, let's, uh, let's try again. Okay. Uh, we, first, we use uh, Retune to provide the data. And we found that uh, uh, we found that uh, Zen overhead Zen overhead occupied more than is about uh, four percent more than four per, 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 per percent against the CPU cycles used by Android uh, by application itself that is coding I/O, and we use uh, Zen choice to further break down that per, that overhead. We found that. Uh, we found that uh, uh, that four percent of our had um, in this uh, the PV only overhead occupied about seven percent. So our conclusion is that it's very hard to 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 further close the gap of um, uh, of eight uh, percent of eight point five percent due to PV only overhead. Another case is uh, home screen scroll. When the user try to uh, scroll the home screen, we found that the power is higher than the later one. So let's, uh, let's use the uh, retune and the, the choice to, to get the data again. First, we use the uh, retune. We found that uh, the, um, sorry. the thing of height is about 1%. The, gap, the total gap of uh, home screen Post screen scroll power is a one point one point two. If we use the Zen trace to further break down the overhead in Zen, we found that we found that the PVMU overhead occupied nearly sixty percent. So PVMU overhead again. It looks like we have no good better way to optimize that, uh, that gap. So that, actually, that is a question uh, I would like to leave the uh, Zen community. Uh, can we find the better way or to optimize PVMMU to get the better performance? OK, you have other gaps. For example, uh, some, some, of, some of gaps have a similar Zen overhead uh, caused by PVMMU or TRS stack switching. For example, when the guest in the guest, uh, if the uh, task switching happens, it, the scheduler will try to switch TLS, local storage, or this or the stack kernel stack, uh, which is done by a uh, hypercall. Um, some of cases can be optimized by reducing hypercall number numbers by op optimizing guest instead of. Um, Optimize the thing itself. For example, coding I/O. Our method is to um, to allocate to force the, the page cache allocated from the, uh, low end memory. In this way, we can avoid <coughs> unnecessary key map and key unmap. So to introduce the PVM PVM we have a cost. But some of cases is very hard. Some some of cases can cases can uh, hack. Uh, could be harder to optimize due to the PV overhead. For example, see for benchmark malloc. Um, in the Android, malloc is implemented in the Bionic. In this uh, mechanism, uh, in this Bionic uh, uh, malloc uh, algorithm, uh, each memory block has, uh, has tail and header to indicate the uh, memory block size or whether the, that memory block is used or not. Uh, when, uh, when the user allocate allocate memory um, from uh, by, by the uh, malloc uh, malloc function, uh, it will uh, the malloc will try to update the tail and header that will trace uh, to uh, page fault. And uh, when the user try to free 
the, uh, the manual that will trigger another page fault. So the three page fault, and uh, we, we can optimize the uh, manual, um, manual algorithm just to just, just update the uh, header in, um, and uh, eliminate the uh, redundant tail update. In this <coughs> way, we can eliminate one page page call, page fault, uh, page fault. Uh, in this way, uh, we can get uh, from the previous performances uh, is a uh, 33 percent to 66 percent, but we still have a 63 percent of gaps. But we have no way. Okay, uh, we think that uh, uh, those issues can be fixed by HVM domain zero. Uh, we have a we have a presentation yesterday to talk about HVM domain zero. Actually, um, um, we found that uh, those those PV overheads problem in in this in this uh, innovation project, and we uh, we started to think about to use uh, HVM domain zero. Um, but unfortunately, uh, the, in this innovation project, this uh, item <coughs> version cannot support EPD. That means uh, um, even if we use HVM DOM, uh, HVM DOM zero, the EP, uh, the we still need to use a shared page. We still have a performance issue. In the next generation item um, course, we, we, we will support EPT. Then at the same time, we can totally avoid that issue by HVM domain zero. Okay, that is summary. First, uh, domain zero and Joey achieved the near native power and performance, and uh, but we still find the po some power and performance gaps caused by PV ops. Um, for example, PV MMU, or TLS stack switch. Yeah, those gaps can be could be fixed by HVM domain zero in our next generation of item. Okay, that's it. Questions? Yeah, any questions? <clears throat> because we're running a little bit of time, let's do two or three questions. Uh, so one of the uh, performance issues was TLS switching. Yeah. Which kernel version were you testing? Um, <coughs> 3.4. Guess the kernel, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's 3.4. Uh, I can't remember when the optimization went in, but that's been improved, uh, and we do a lot fewer TLS switching now. Fact, yeah, which current version are you referring know. to? And there have been other performance improvements okay. that have gone in since 3.4 to reduce some of the uh, PVMMU overhead, particularly with 32 bit guests. Okay, that's great. Thank you. So, a couple of times you had lists of things that were taking all the time and you had multi calls in which you attributed to PVMMU stuff. Yes. But a multi call can contain any hyper call. Did you actually dig down to see which multi call what the constituents of multi calls actually were? You yeah, you are right. Actually a uh, multiple call um you okay, let's go back to this. There was one where it was like thirty odd percent. <coughs> yeah, multiple call here. Um most of multiple calls are, um, multiple calls are, are used to, uh, uh, are used for, for the P, uh, P, uh, MM, MMU update. Yeah. But it also has uh, some multiple, multiple calls are TLS. But in this case, we just uh, ignore it because uh, TLS switching just happen, happen in the context switch, yeah, task, task, context switch in the ghost kernel. It, we can ignore it. <coughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you.